All right. Oh five. Obviously, you can tell from the color. If you know, um, SRT four. Um, what we got here is uh, it's kind of hard to see here. We can get down in here. We have a manifold that was installed at one time. That's <clears throat> externally gated. Yep, externally gated. Uh, if you, uh, I don't know, there's probably bad light. Down in here, looks like this bolt here is loose. Yep, I can turn it with my finger. So we got an exhaust leak right from the manifold to the elbow. And then over here on this side, we actually have two studs snapped over here off of this one. One feels like it's even with the manifold, the other one it could have fell out or whatever. I'll have to look and get down in there and see. But <clears throat> what we want to do, okay, so our downpipe gasket, what we have here, this is the Felpro. This is the stock regular neon, works for regular 2.0 neon, and it is the same for the turbo. This is the downpipe gasket, it's two and a half. See? Then this is the part number, part number, part number. This is the part number you want to get. This is what it's for. All right. This is three inch opening. Then it's if you have the three inch elbow, which this car has installed. So we needed these to fix this exhaust leak. And we got these. Hopefully they're the correct ones for this uh, setup and uh, work for what we need. So we're gonna tear into this and uh, we're gonna videotape what uh, what kind of mess we find here. I mean, we've got a couple extra things we gotta move out of the way being that it has modifications. So, but uh, hey, we gotta fix this stuff if you wanna have fun. I got the X truck race skating here. I'm done. Trying to get it out of here. Look at that nice pretty thing. <clears throat> All right. So the next thing, let's get this lower exhaust off and get this coolant bottle out of the way. Where it's at, I just I think it should be rerouted, but we'll figure that out here once we get into this. We got downpipe undone. The elbows sitting down in here. The exhaust manifold sitting down in here. And this is what we got to look at here. This is where our problem is. We have one, two on the top. They are snapped off. And then one down here on the bottom that's bad that we need to get removed and then we'll get everything cleaned up I'll show you some of the stuff I use to clean stuff up I'll show you a couple of the tools I'm going to use to get this out I mean sometimes this stuff is it's trial and error trying to get these out sometimes you're lucky and they just come right out so we'll, uh, we'll cross our fingers and uh, hope we don't have to Hopefully they come out easy and we're not into doing anything too extra with any kind of extra materials here to get this stuff out. So All right. All right. move one of these extractors. It's it looks rusty because we had to use heat the last time I pulled one of these out. So basically what you do is you take this and Find your stud. With the hammer. Grab the wrench that fits it. And cross your fingers.
and the best thing is not to drop it but that's how you get that out um, we should be able to use that same technique for the one down here on the bottom this one here where it's at probably not going to be able to grab a hold of it I'm probably going to end up having to weld uh, I'll probably end up welding a nut to that stud and uh, try to get it out that way or I'll try tapping on it with a chisel sometimes they'll come right loose because there's no tension or pressure holding them so sometimes you can get away with tapping on them just got to figure out what's going to fit down in here so we'll get the other one out and then we'll go from there okay we got on the other one that other one came out we dug it up out okay so just wanted to show you quick what you got to do to get these out of here tripody thing set up here. Alright. So I just take a punch. Hit through the back of the hole. Here's the other one that we had pulled off. You can see where it was grabbing it because of what it did to the threads. Sometimes you can get lucky and just hold it in your hand. Tap on it light. And it'll come right out. That's the way it should be. That's easy. So alright, now we got to try to get the one that's uh broke off down in there. Alright. Where we got the freaking mirror at? There we go. Okay. Now, what we tried to do here, you can't see it in the dam. There we go. Alright. There's our camera. Alright, there's the nut. Uh, what we attempted to do here, this is the first try, is get a nut that fits down over, weld to it, and hopefully grab the nut and back the stud out. Usually this works pretty good. I've only ever had one that I couldn't get out and it was a seriously uh, deteriorated head, like the aluminum was all like deteriorated around the bowl because somebody ran it. Oh my goodness, years and years and years, like the exhaust manifolds were rotted off of it. And it was a piece way down and you just couldn't get, I just couldn't get a hold of it. But we'll see how this works. Uh, this is the first time I'm trying this since I got uh, a, a newer 220 water instead of a 110 water I was using before. So it should just set right up and come right out. Usually I weld it, I let it cool a little bit and then grab a hold of it with the wrench and take it out. Sometimes you end up not being welded onto the bolt or whatever's left coming out good enough and then you just have to try again so, we'll see here what happens This sucker does not feel good. Looks like it's actually backing it out. That's a major plus. <clears throat> Unless the bolt's actually coming off of the what studs left in there. Could be a possibility too. Like I said, it's it's trial and error. At one time you just get it right, the heat sits in, or you break it loose a little bit with one, and then it snaps off because you didn't get it welded good enough. And that's what it looks like here, yep. So what we'll do is we'll grab another nut and make another attempt. Okay, so this is about... Let's break. This is about my fifth try of welding a nut on it. I don't know if you can see in there really too good. I can't really tell by what I'm seeing off of the camera. Kind of see it there. Believe it's actually turning the stud.
It's one of those things. Just keep, keep going and keep going. Eventually, they come out. I feel like we should have got the ratchet wrench. I didn't think it was going to be this long in here. I just wanted to show this. These were the two that we had to extract. This is what we ended up doing. We welded the nut right onto the stud. So we could pull it out. These were some of our failed attempts, two of them. Okay, well, since we were in here, the oil return line was leaking a little bit. So we got the gasket out, got the surface cleaned up. We have our bolts cleaned up to go back in. We have a new, as you notice, Mopar gasket to reinstall which will hopefully fix our oil leak. We did get uh, our gasket surfaces here cleaned up. And the elbow here, we've got that sucker. It's ready to go back down in there until it's reinstalled. So it's all cleaned up. Other than having a bunch of stuff laying everywhere, we are on the, uh, we're on the road to uh, reassembly right here after this so we'll get the gasket in and then uh we'll get our head studs started up and our gaskets and stuff and we'll get everything assembled on i'll show some of that all right so we did we made some headway we have our gaskets replaced we had our services that were cleaned up and we are reinstalling our exhaust manifold now you're going to say what's that blue stuff Blue stuff is silicone. Some people try to use Loctite. Loctite, it doesn't lock after a certain temperature. And I mean, you're using a turbo, even if you got on there with the red, it's not gonna hold it. Silicone has always been what I've used for any kind of manifold bolts. Um, even when I worked on the Mustangs, especially going into the aluminum heads, um, I just put the silicone on your standard bolts for using any aftermarket header. And it worked, you know, everybody was all, let's go buy the lock ring ones with the little clips to hold them so they don't turn. You don't need all that. Just put a little silicone on there. It sets up, it keeps it from vibrating loose. It, uh, when you do need to take it out, it's not going to hold it in there. It's just going to roll right out and let you take it out. As you can see, the, the studs have a little nut piece on the top, so I'm installing them with a ratchet. Nice and tight there. Now, these come with nuts. I put a little bit of silicone on them too. If anything, you're just gonna you're gonna see some blue. You know, you get a little bit in the threads. It keeps them from you tighten them up once and you're done. It's not, let's come back and retighten them after a heat cycle or two and make sure have. it's all right. Nice new gasket on here. And we have our three inch elbows connected to the manifold. We're getting ready to tighten up our downpipe. We did use the three inch gaskets like I showed you. So that we have good clearance for exhaust. Yes, we need a little bit there extra that that was. Um, if you can't get them and use regular ones, you can put them on. Eventually, it just burns the center of the gasket away, just like uh, just like this when you have an exhaust leak. So it'll just burn the center out. You won't have a flow problem. <clears throat> All right, everything's reassembled. We just installed our battery. Stuff always fits nice and tight. 
Okay. We'll start this out and see what happens. Oh, on the passenger seat. Here we go. 